science. It's not being negative. It's just a fact. And we're incredibly courageous people, uh, beings, just to cope with all this knowledge we have of death and knowing that this is our fate that faces us day in and day out, grating on us all. Not just, you know, the death of a loved one that you may fear more than your own death, but your loved one, you know, hurting somebody else in a way, and then the psychological implications and ramifications that can play on somebody from maiming and killing people. We see 20 true vet, 22 veterans a day, some 22 veterans a day, taking their own lives from whatever remorse they've got from being over there in the Middle East. I mean, I mean, can I, if I yell and scream and rant and rave, will, will I get through to people more? Or can I sit here and just tell you that God is very angry, he's very unhappy with us. And the wrath of God is upon humanity now, okay? And we've got to face the music. We've got to be honest with ourselves. Otherwise, who are you? If you can't even be honest with yourself and your own conscience and value it enough to pray to God sincerely and genuinely say, God, please, if, if my thinking is askew, if my opinions and my belief system is, is tainted and fouled up with worldly things, then reveal it to me. Show me, convict me of these things, you know, change me because I want to be pleasing to you. I want to be a fragrant aroma in your nostrils. Okay, I want to do right. I want the rewards that are promised. Okay, for whoever gives one of these little ones that loves me even a drink of cold water will not lose his reward. And what is that cold water a, a metaphor, an allegory for? Okay, what is it? Okay, I mean, I just spent nearly an hour talking to a single homeless guy out on the streets here in Chico, California the other day. To me, that was, that was giving him water but it was also giving me water it was give and take by having respect and regard for him it gave me respect and regard for myself because i know what i believe i believe in equality and americans have to if you re, if you regard somebody as an equal if you prescribe to christian philosophy of love your fellow human being and even love your enemy then you've got to admit you've got to face that truth and that's carrying your cross is just Look, you're no better. You don't want to be better in your right mind. You just want to be equal. You just want respect and regard. You want people to love you because you're willing to love them and accept and forgive. And, and let's move on together and unify and just say, look, we know this whole thing, this whole conjured up so-called reality is a satanic nightmare, okay, for the righteous. For those that hunger and thirst for righteousness to be the rule of the day on the earth instead of what we've got okay we've got rife inequality growing inequality wealth imbalance disparity poverty all this stuff that's unnecessary look if it's unnecessary it's unnecessary there's no equivocation that's a very uh non-subjective term it's an absolute term it's an, it, the object, okay? It's an objective term, okay? You can't refute it. You can't debate it. You can't have an opinion about it because it is, as a matter of fact, an absolute term. It is unnecessary human suffering I'm talking about here. And nobody can deny that. Nobody can deny that at this point in human history, this point in human civilization, that we could end poverty worldwide tomorrow, okay? Virtually tomorrow. Okay, that's not even hyperbolic. That's not even exaggerating this thing. Okay, that's the reality. And you're only being intellectually dishonest. You've got some ulterior motive. You believe you're prescribing inequality even though it might be happening on a semi-conscious, subconscious level. You're still prescribing to an elitist, hypocritical philosophy, believing in a double standard. That we've just got to cheat somebody. Not everybody can have a good shake and have and every job can't be gainful employment i mean most people aren't even willing to look at that fact i mean we're going to cheat the farm workers we're going to say it's okay because it's unskilled labor or you know we can't we you know what the price of food would be isn't that the way it's unspoken people don't talk about these things but we all think them right we all know what i'm saying is true i mean tell me you think it wasn't a diabolical ploy that the labor department has been utterly profoundly remiss. I mean, it'd be better if we didn't have a labor department. They're absolutely utterly useless over the last 55 years. 
A dollar an hour is what the Labor Department had the wages, minimum wage set at, maybe approximately some 55 years ago. Do you understand? A buck an hour was sufficient. One person in the family, the head of the household, go out and work, right? And the other partner, the spouse, could stay home, take care of the kids. That's how it used to be. That's a reality. Were we more entitled back then because we had this far higher standard of living, greater sense of financial security and prosperity and hope to enter the middle class and, and home ownership was a lot easier, phenomenally easier back then. But due to the coin clipping, currency debasement, and they keep on cutting that dollar over the years. Do you understand? The Labor Department is very aware. They're, I don't know what to say. I mean, there's nobody to even speak. Have you ever heard somebody from the Labor Department justify what's happened over the last 55 years in this country with minimum wage and how they've let it fall so sorely behind the true cost of living tax? Uh, I mean, it's it's it, it, it. That's why I get a little nuts, okay? Because I've had to watch this thing unfolding for a long, long time, and I'm trying to reach people that either. They are playing stupid, they really are stupid, or they're intellectually dishonest and liars, okay? That's all, I can't find anybody else, okay? I just refuse to believe I'm like the smartest guy in the world, okay? That would be a real curse, I mean, if that's the case. But I know there's got to be some people that understand what I'm saying, that it's not radical, it's not at all in the least bit unreasonable to suggest the Labor Department should have absolutely use the real cost price index, the CPI, the cost of living, and you adjust it. And a cost of living adjustment, that's, you know, everybody thinks of it as a raise, but you know what? It could go the other way too. This is a two-way street. Remember, if everything's getting cheaper to you, do you understand, which is true progress under capitalism, under free market, supply and demand, capitalism, true capitalism, your currency naturally goes up in worth organically, automatically. Okay, so you understand what would have happened here. Okay, everybody in America, and by extension, gradually the entire planet would have been prosperous. Do you understand? Free. So in other words, the society, the system, civilization continues to function, but the only difference is, is everybody's doing it of their own free will and accord, much like a volunteer would do something. You don't have somebody telling you, coercing you, telling you, you you've got to do this thing. If you don't capitulate, if you don't acquiesce, if you don't comply... <coughs> to what we tell you, then we won't give you any money. And if you don't have money, you can't exist anymore. You can't survive. So it's very, very powerful in terms of being a driver. Okay, so it's this fear-based unreality has been shoved down our throats. We've all learned to accept. We're, we're good at that. We can adapt to a lot of adversity and, and crap. And that's what we've done. And I object strongly, okay? I, I, everybody's just got to say, you know what? I'm not going to capitulate. I'm not going to acquiesce. I'm going to think outside the box. I'm a good American. I'm a good human being. And I want everybody to be free. And I'm willing that all of us live together in peace and harmony, safety, security, freedom, and prosperity, if that happens to be God's will, which is spelled out in Scripture. And among all the faiths have to agree that, yes, that's what we want. When the captives are set free, who, what are they set free from? The money has no more power over them. This is Satan's tool. It's his ambrosia. He wants you to love the same food that he loves. And this is what sustains him and nurtures him. You pay your taxes, you think you're so great. Well, I pay a lot of taxes, and I got a, I got a lot of say-so here. I'm putting my two cents in because of my taxes. Hey, you're feeding the beast the most, right? Okay, so look at it like that, and be you're more culpable then for this establishment system, this beast system. That's all it is. It's based on fraud up one side, down the other, to the nth degree, and round and round. Okay, it, 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 look, there's nobody ever going to convince me that this system has an iota of justice, okay, working within it. Just look, maybe an occasional story here and there of somebody being treated fairly in the system, okay, but it is not the trajectory. The trajectory we've been on since the murder, the, uh, the assassination of JFK has been straight down, downhill. They keep on clipping. Or who can say they haven't clipped our coins? Zimbabwe in slow motion. Cost of living inflation tax. It is a tax. Stuff you can't get away from. I don't care about any luxury items, trinkets, knickknacks, anything like that. I don't care. I'm not caught. Those things aren't your cost of living. Your cost of living consists of your food, 
your shelter, your water, and your utilities. Do you understand? That's it. The things you can't get away from that you absolutely need. Even clothes, we could debate that. Okay, but they're really not a need. You don't need them. No other animals need clothes. But you seek certain things. All animals seek shelter, for example. And they all need food. And they all need water. So, you understand what I'm saying here. Uh, and our currency has been debased. It's been just like taking scissors and clipping off little bits of your dollar. Okay, and the math can be done. Minimum wage would be, on average, across the country, over 40 bucks an hour to have the commensurate proportional equivalent buying power of minimum wage 55 years ago. As exaggerated and hyperbolic as that seems, that's a matter of fact. So all you people put that in your pipes and smoke it when you talk about all these entitled minimum wage workers wanting 15 bucks an hour. It's too late, man. That ship sailed. Okay, so the only hope we have is there's going to be a dramatic downturn in our cost of living. Okay, but you see, they these people already foresaw what's going on in our economy and the way they've been propping it up. Okay, is through this immigration, this loose immigration policy, a head count, putting the nation more in debt. Oh, the government agencies need more money. We got all this more need, so keep pumping it in. You know, it's like putting gas in your gas tank. You got a big hole in there and it's pouring out, and you just add more, as the ideas everybody's telling you to, you know, just add more gas. Put it in faster, and then, you know, it'll, it, you know, can't pour out that fast. So if you put it in faster than it's pouring out, you know, this has been the solution. More debt, more debt. Just pile it on. Keynesian, the worst of Keynesianism. It's not, there's not even currency velocity involved. If there was at least currency velocity where people weren't insecure and they weren't all trying to hang on to their few dollars and they were spending it in the economy and it just went round and round and we could all utilize it, use it and put it back in, you know, the treasury. You know, it's not like that. You know, it's not like we're getting in the black more. We're just getting in more debt, more problem, more currency debasement. More clipping of the coin, clipping of the Federal Reserve note, de currency debasement, cost of living tax inflation. California is way ahead of the curve. So if you want to know the, the direction, the trend for the rest of the nation, just look at California. Your cost of living, there's, there's going to be people coming into your town to raise your cost of living. That's the way it works around here. This guy I talked to the other day, this 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 uh, homeless guy, he had a chip on his shoulder. He was full of piss and vinegar. He thought the the authorities were kind of hard on him and kind of persecuting him. But he's from Tennessee. I mean, people want to escape harsh climates, especially if you're homeless. So, you know, you wonder why, you know, California has gone the direct, well, Go Governor Moonbeam, he's increased poverty. But you understand they, they want problems. The, the worst nightmare for the evildoers of this world is to actually solve problems and just and the one problem they've absolutely got to keep intact okay is the desperate poverty okay this gives them a lot of control because they get a lot of crime it drives a lot of the crime all the drug sales and the prostitution uh, so many of the homicides are involved therein and uh, we got uh, I mean, endless ills in society. I mean, just think of all the, all the kind of theft that the embezzlement, the, the, the extortion, the carjackings, burglaries and robberies, uh, bank robberies, uh, insurance fraud murders. I mean, it just goes on and on. I could all day on how money drives crime. Okay, so nobody can argue that point. That is a matter of fact. Okay, and these dubious wars are driven with desperate people also that want to feel relevant. So, yes, I'm wanted, I'm, you know, it's valiant to serve, and I understand it. I tried to join the service myself. My dad was in the Marine Corps. I'm very proud of him, being ready to march and die for the Jews and, and the other innocents being murdered over there. A lot of Christians, too. Hitler was a maniac, a psychopath that needed his ass kicked, and he got it kicked. Good, and my dad was a part of that. So, you know, I'm not taking anything away from our, our military people. They're great people. And I myself tried to be one of them on more than one occasion, but uh, it didn't work out. So they didn't want me. Let's put it that way. I was too old. Age discrimination, right? Prime of my life, never been stronger at 43 in 2001, but they didn't want me. But anyhow, you see... The national debt, too. They couldn't get this started. If you didn't have people that were desperately poor, you see, this is, you got to understand what drives people to borrow money. And how, yes, you feel grateful when you, a loan is approved and you buy your first house and you could go kiss the feet of the lender and bring them flowers. I get it. I was there. So it's not like I don't understand where people's heads are at. 
and you feel I got to jump on the bandwagon because I knew my intuition, my sixth sense told me that things were going to change and that they were going to keep on manipulating markets and fixing prices and housing because there's a this this collusion of these special interest groups out there that form this monopoly that's very powerful and they have a, a staked interest in, in raising the cost of housing and even the government now because I figured out the government uh, is incentivized by higher property tax income. So you understand how devious this is and how powerful it is. And we're in a lot of trouble, folks, but I'm not going to, I'm tired of getting all freaked out. I mean, I'm not going to rant and rave and get freaked out. My blood pressure, my heart, my longevity, I turn 60 tomorrow. And, um, and I feel like I got another 60 years in me, but only if I calm down and have a little peace of mind, because I tell you what, I mean, I'm done. I'm just done. I, I'm not going to just, you know, just bleed myself.